Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference was full of interesting announcements. Starting with Apple's Racial Equity and Justice Initiative and COVID-19 Address. Two weeks ago, we announced Apple's Racial Equity and Justice Initiative with a commitment of $100 million. This initiative will challenge systemic barriers that limit opportunity for communities of color in the critical areas of education, economic equality, and criminal justice. The new Developer Entrepreneur Camp for Black Developers. We want to do everything we can to foster the brightest lights and best ideas. Right now, our world is also battling a virus that is affecting the daily lives of billions of people. Today, the world is counting on all of us and on the products and experiences that we create to move forward. With that, let's get started by sending it over to Craig. Its first product announcement was iOS 14. New features include an app library, size options for widgets, and picture-in-picture -picture video. Wouldn't it be great if there were a way to organize all of those apps without doing a thing? Well, this year we're doing just that with something called the App Library. It's a new space at the end of your home screen pages that automatically organizes all your apps in one simple and easy to navigate view. Let's turn to widgets. They now come in a variety of sizes. I'm just gonna tap and hold on the weather widget and I can drag it out of today view and onto my home screen. Now, when I tap on one, I can actually page through all of the different sizes available. The smart stack, I'm just gonna tap it and drop it here. With the smart stack, I can easily swipe through widgets to pick just the one I want for the moment. Next, we're also bringing picture in picture to iPhone. When I swipe to go home, the video automatically goes into picture in picture right over the home screen. And when I launch another app, like notes, I can keep watching. Now I can drag the picture to another part of the screen. If I wanna make it bigger, I can even pinch to zoom. And as I move between applications, it stays with me. And what's cool is I can also swipe it to the side and the audio keeps playing when it's off screen. And Siri got seriously updated. Siri's always been great for getting information and now has over 20 times more facts than just three years ago. This year, you can now ask Siri to send an audio message and Siri will start recording. When communicating with someone in another language, Siri can help with translations. That's why we're introducing a new app called Translate. You can translate your text and voice between any combination of these 11 languages. Just tap on the microphone and say, what are your store hours? ¿Cuáles son las horas de su tienda? And just turn the phone to landscape to open conversation mode. We've designed a side-by-side -side view that's easy for two people to know which side to follow in the conversation. This mode is incredibly intuitive, with just a single microphone button because the app intelligently detects the language spoken and shows translation on the correct side of the screen. Next up, messages. We are introducing a new way to let you stay connected to your most important conversations by letting you pin them at the top of your list so you can always get to them. In iOS 14, we're adding even more ways to create your look with over 20 new hair and headwear styles to let you reflect your hobby, profession, and personality. We've also added something that's even more relevant today, face coverings. And we're adding more age options too. And now you can mention people in group chats or respond in inline messages. And Apple Maps got some major upgrades. Not only can you now see dedicated routes for cycling, but also EV routing for electric cars. With iOS 14, Maps will track your current charge and factor in things like elevation and weather to automatically add charging stops along your route. Apple is even doing away with car keys. You can now leave the keys at home and unlock certain cars with your iPhone. And the very first car to support this will be the new 2021 BMW 5 Series. And I place my phone on the charging pad and then push to start. With each key you share, you can set options like a restricted driving profile, perfect for teen drivers. The new BMW will be available to customers next month. In addition to adding this feature to iOS 14, we're also enabling it in iOS 13, so customers can use their car keys even sooner. Introducing App Clips, a new feature designed to make sure you really do have an app for that. They start with this card, which quickly pops up, and with just a tap, you can launch the App Clip. You don't need to enter credit card numbers because App Clips can use Apple Pay for payments. 
And you don't have to manually log into an account because it can take advantage of sign in with Apple. You'll be able to tap on NFC tags out in the world on things like parking meters, or you can scan QR codes to launch app clips that work with products you purchase, app clip code. So you tap on them or scan them with the camera to bring up an app clip. Small in size, so they launch fast. Photos, music, calls, and more have all been upgraded on the iPad OS too. The sidebar is a really powerful way to organize your photos too. I can easily drag a photo to the sidebar and then just drop it to add it to an album. We've brought this sidebar to many apps across iPad OS, like Notes, where it provides quick and easy access to all your folders. I can quickly jump between the new Listen Now and my playlists. Now an incoming call is presented with a compact notification that doesn't take you out of context. And you can simply tap to answer or flick it away to dismiss. As soon as you start typing, you get relevant suggestions to complete your search, and you can get to your web search results with just a tap. Apple Pencil just got even more powerful. And so now when I draw a simple shape and pause at the end, it'll automatically convert to that ideal shape, retaining the same size and angle that you drew it at. You'll notice how we can select the handwriting while avoiding the drawings nearby. I can easily change the color or move it around the document. Let's say you want to search for Edison bulbs in Safari. Using Scribble, I can just write directly into the text field and it automatically gets converted to type text. It also works in any text field, so I can easily add a new reminder to my shared reminders list with my husband. You'll notice how Scribble recognizes both English and Chinese in the same line. Apple packed more features into its AirPods, including the ability to automatically switch between devices and spatial audio. For an authentic surround sound experience, you need the sound field to stay fixed, so the voice feels like it's coming from the actor and not some random point in space. So we use the accelerometer and gyroscopes in AirPods Pro to track the motion of your head, remapping the sound field so it stays anchored to your device, even as your head moves. And it's not only your head that can move, but you might move your iPad or iPhone as well. That's why we constantly compare the motion data from your head and your screen. The sound stays in sync. Don't worry, the Apple Watch was not left out of the OS upgrade parade. The fitness app now supports dance. In dance, we combine data from the accelerometer and the gyroscope to detect the difference between dancing with just your arms, just your lower body, or when you put it all together and dance with your entire body. Then we add in heart rate data for the most accurate calorie burn calculations. Watch OS 7 also tracks accurate calories for core training, those exercises for your abs and back. Functional strength training, a workout type that helps you get stronger and move better for everyday activities. And also cool downs to add on to another workout when you want to continue with easy moves and stretches as you bring your heart rate and breathing back to normal. And on the flip side, it has sleep tracking. Apple Watch tracks your sleep using a machine learning model that senses your motion and even interprets the micro movements caused by the rise and fall of your breath. It can even track your hand washing. In watchOS 7, Apple Watch is the first watch to deliver automatic detection when you start washing your hands and sensing of how long you actually wash. Our approach here is using machine learning models to determine motion which appears to be hand washing and then use audio to confirm the sound of running water or squishing soap on your hands. During this, you'll get a little coaching to do a good job. You'll see a countdown along with haptics and sounds to make sure you wash as long as you're supposed to. If you pause early, there's a polite note to keep washing. And when you're done, you'll see, hear, and feel it. On a more serious note, Apple pivoted to privacy. We're looking at more security, more tracking control, and more transparency in apps. App Store policy will require apps to ask before tracking you across apps and websites owned by other companies. We're going to require each developer to self-report their practices. We'll show you what they tell us. You can see if a developer is collecting a little bit of data on you or a lot of data, or if they're sharing data with other companies to track you. We're going to put this information on product pages in the App Store. So for each app, you can see highlights of their privacy information before you download it. Your smart home could also get smarter. Apple's home products got a whole series of updates, including automation, adaptive lighting, and facial recognition. Telling you who's there by leveraging the friends and family you've already tagged in your photos app. And face recognition extends to HomePod, announcing who's at the door. And with Apple TV, you'll get a live view whenever someone rings the bell. 
Now for the big Mac OS update. Big Sur. Apple has redesigned every app, updated the notification center and widgets, and added a control center to the Mac. And what's really cool is that I can customize the menu bar with any of these controls. So say I want one-click access to Do Not Disturb. Well, I can just click and drag it right into my menu bar and customize just like that. Safari got a slew of new features, like extensions, a built-in translation, and a visual way to control tabs. Privacy is essential to everything we do at Apple, and it's critical on the web. If I click on the Intelligent Tracking Prevention button, I can see the number of known trackers that Safari protected me from on this web page. I can click here to see a list of the known trackers right here in this popover. And the full privacy report is just one click away. You can just hover over tabs and see a nice preview of the page. I'm ready to clean up now, and that's easy too. I can just bring up the context menu here and close all tabs to the right. And all of the Mac apps will feel different because the Mac is getting a new processor. Apple Silicon is Apple's response to Intel. Our team delivered 10 generations of increasingly complex and rich designs, always improving performance. Now, when we talk about performance, we have to talk about power because all systems built today are constrained by power consumption, thermals, or both. Desktops deliver the highest performance but consume the most power. Notebooks trade off performance for lower power, making them portable. As you can see, normally to get more performance, you have to consume more power. When you take a closer look at this chart, you realize you want to operate in the upper left corner. You want to deliver the highest performance at the lowest power consumption. And that's exactly where we want to take the Mac. One huge feature is the uniform architecture that allows almost every app to function on all platforms. The transition to Apple Silicon is also great for developers who've already optimized their apps for other Apple platforms. The shared architecture across our products means that their code will absolutely sing on our new Macs. Rosetta 2 and a new Quick Start program will make it easy for developers to transition apps between platforms. But developers have time. The vast majority of Mac apps can be recompiled as universal in a few days, so users can have fast, native apps. Rosetta 2 runs existing Mac apps. Our virtualization technology makes it easier than ever to bring other environments like Linux to the Mac. And Mac users can, for the first time, run iOS and iPadOS apps directly, tapping into the world's most vital app ecosystem. We're launching a Quick Start program. The focus of the Quick Start program is to enable developers to make their apps universal and take advantage of all the capabilities of Apple Silicon. This program also includes new developer transition kit hardware, so developers can get going even before we ship production systems. Developers will be able to apply to the program at developer.apple.com today. We will be shipping units out starting this week so you can get to work. So what's the timeline for this transition? Well, for developers, it begins this week with the valuable information delivered at this conference as well as applying for the Quick Start program. And for the customers, we expect to ship our first Mac with Apple Silicon by the end of this year, and we expect the transition to take about two years. We plan to continue to support and release new versions of macOS for Intel-based Macs for years to come. Our OS releases will be available as developer betas today, and each of them will have a public beta, including watchOS for the very first time starting next month. And all of this great software will be available to our customers this fall.